This is lab three of ECE 480. In this lab, we will continue with the Digital Color Organ project and learn about Code Composer Studio and the MSP 430. The first figure here shows a very basic block diagram of the MSP 430 microcontroller. On the left-hand side, we have the inputs, either analog or digital. And on the right-hand side, we have the outputs, digital only. The MSP 430 is a tool that can take these inputs process them, and control a corresponding digital output. Any basic microcontroller will have four parts, a CPU, flash memory, RAM, and programmable input-output pins. The Texas Instruments MSP430 adds analog to digital converters, comparators, and programmable timers, all of which can be accessed through the input-output pins. One of the main benefits of the MSP430 is that prices start at under $1. This enables applications of microcontrollers in a whole new segment of electrical and electronic products. For our application, the Digital Color Organ Project, the input will be an analog signal from either the microphone amplifier or the line input summer. The MSP430 will then convert this to a digital signal, split it up into four different frequency bands using digital filters, and use the amplitude of each frequency band to control a pulse width modulated output, which will determine the brightness of each of the four LED banks. There are several hundred variations in the MSP430 product line. The part that we will be using is the G2553 variant, which is part of the value line and has been optimized for low cost. The maximum CPU speed is 16 megahertz, down from 25 megahertz in more expensive parts. Flash memory and RAM are relatively limited at 16 kilobytes and 512 bytes. However, this is more than enough for our application. There are a total of 16 general purpose input output or GPIO pins. The limiting factor here is the package. Surface mount packages can have up to 40 GPIO pins. Finally, there are two 16-bit programmable timers. More expensive MSP430 variants can have up to four individually programmable timers. At the bottom of the page here, we have another block diagram that shows a little more detail about how the MSP430 operates. At the center of the system is a CPU. This gets its timing information from the clock system and passes information back and forth between the flash memory, the RAM, and the GPIO pins. Let's go into a little more detail about how the clock system in the MSP430 works. This figure gives a very basic overview of everything that's involved in the MSP430 clock system. On the right, we have the signals that are available to the programmer. The A clock, the M clock, and the SM clock. And then on the left, we have the sources for these clock signals, either the VLO, the crystal, or the DCO. During the setup process, we can configure which clock signal uses which source. The VLO is a very low power and low frequency oscillator. Standby current is only 500 nanoamps. At an operating voltage of 1.8 volts, this means that total power consumption is under 1 microwatt. The downside is that the frequency is not very accurate. It can vary between 4 and 20 kilohertz, with 12 kilohertz being typical. The VLO can be used as either a source for the M clock or the A clock. Next we have the crystal oscillator. The downside to this is that it's very expensive and difficult to install. When compared to the VLO though, it is very accurate. You should be able to measure this frequency of 32.768 kHz to three decimal places using the equipment in lab. Again, this can be used as either a source for the A clock or the M clock. Finally, we have the Digitally Controlled Oscillator, or DCO. Like the VLO, the DCO is very inexpensive because it is built onto the chip. Unlike the VLO, it is very accurate and a much higher frequency. Four calibrated frequencies are available to the programmer, 
16 megahertz, 12 megahertz, 8 megahertz, and 1 megahertz. This oscillator can be used as a source for either the M clock or the SM clock. So where would you want to use these three different clock signals? We have the M clock, which is the master clock, the A clock, which is the auxiliary clock, and the SM clock, which is the sub-master clock. The M clock is used to run the CPU and is usually sourced from the DCO. It can also be sourced from the VLO or the crystal, though. For low power applications, the VLO is ideal. And on the other hand, for high accuracy applications, the crystal is ideal. The A clock and the SM clock will be used to run peripherals. For example, the analog to digital converter that we will use in the next lab. It is important to remember that the selected clock speed has a direct effect on power usage. We'll see this in the next page. One of the main selling points of the MSP430 is that it is capable of very low power operation. This graph here compares system frequency to supply voltage. As we can see, as the system frequency is reduced, the required supply voltage is also reduced. For example, at 6 MHz, a 1.8 volt supply voltage is all that's required. If we need the full 16 MHz CPU speed, we need to increase that supply voltage to 3.3 volts. What this means is that running at lower clock speeds enables lower voltage operation, which will save power, but also limits the maximum clock speed. In addition to enabling lower voltage operation, lower clock speeds also consume less current. The general rule for the MSP430 is 250 microamps per million instructions per second. This means that running at 1.8 volts and 1 million instructions per second, the MSP430 will only consume about 500 microwatts. In the last part of this lab, we will add digital inputs to our circuit. This requires the use of a pull-up or a pull-down resistor. Normally, these are external circuits that need to be added. However, the MSP430 has them built onto the chip. It is important to know how they operate and why they are needed, though. For this first case here, the pull-up resistor, when the switch is thrown, the input is grounded to 0 volts. When the switch is opened, the input is pulled up to 3.3 volts by the resistor R1. If this resistor weren't here, the input would simply be left floating, and we wouldn't be able to determine whether or not the input was a 1 or a 0. The other case is a pull-down resistor. In this example, when the switch is thrown, the input is connected to 3.3 volts. When the switch is opened, the input is pulled down to 0 volts by resistor R1. Again, if this resistor wasn't here, the input would simply be left floating, and we wouldn't be able to determine whether it was a 1 or a 0. The software package that we will be using to program the MSP430 is Code Composer Studio. The MSP430 can also be programmed using industry standard tools such as IAR Integrated Workbench. However, TI has developed their own tool for the MSP430. Both of these tools, Code Composer Studio and Integrated Workbench, are what are called Integrated Development Environments, or IDEs. These are tools that combine software for editing and compiling code, programming microcontrollers, and finally debugging code. All IDEs will have these three basic features. Each software package is slightly different, though. So getting familiar with the Code Composer Studio environment along with learning the basic functions of the MSP430 will be the purpose of this lab. The first concept we're going to cover in this lab are the basic features that are available in an IDE. This will be part A of the lab. Next we're going to move on to calibrating and measuring clock signals. This will require initializing registers in a microcontroller. Finally, we're going to add digital inputs to the MSP430 using push buttons. This will require some knowledge of C programming. 
The laboratory techniques we're going to cover are measuring frequency and amplitude of clock signals using an oscilloscope, and also triggering and setting up an oscilloscope without using autoscale. This becomes very useful when autoscale fails to find a signal. Again, this is Lab 3 of ECE 480. Thanks for watching.